Hi, I'm Bryony Kennedy, the founder of Adorn Cosmetics, and today I'm going to show you my Pretty With Pink tutorial. I'm going to break down every stage so you can follow along with me. You guessed it, I'm going to use as many pink colors as I can, and I'm going to be putting on our newly released Persistence Pink Bright Popping Lip Color. So, let's get started. So preparing your skin, you've cleansed it, you've cleaned up any excess eye makeup because you don't want that to look like you've got dark circles once you put your makeup on. You spritz with our rose water, the Bulgarian Pure Rose Water. This makes the skin really nice and moist and supple so that when you put your moisturizer on, it's able to penetrate and hydrate the skin a lot better than just on dry skin. So I'm now putting on one pump of the Primer Day Moisturizer. Even half a pump may be enough for most. And I'm putting it over my eyes. And I'm done. So now I'm going to put on our Soothing Barrier Balm onto my lips so that by the time I get to the stage of putting a lipstick on, my lips are going to be nice and soft and they're not going to look cracked. And obviously the lipstick or the gloss or whatever you choose to put on your lips is going to look at its best. Okay, now that my skin is best prepared for foundation, I'm going to use our oil-free liquid foundation. I'm going to use the color in medium olive, and I'm also going to mix it with our Skin Radiance Liquid Illuminizer, just to give my skin a really nice, dewy, healthy look to the skin, give it more of a youthful glow, but without making my skin look shimmery. Using the Kabuki brush, which is a flat top foundation application brush, I'm going to put on one pump at a time, blending it into the skin, but I'm also going to put a pump of the Skin Radiance Liquid Illuminizer onto the Kabuki with the foundation and blend them together for that radiant look. So it's just one pump at a time. blending from the center part of the face out. And you can see just how nicely and even this side of my face is compared to this side. It's lifted just the liquid on its own. It's lifted that dark circle a little bit. So if you don't have dark circles as bad as I do, you might find you don't need concealer. Uh, it's also helped hide a little bit of this pigment damage. Um, and it's also given a really nice, even dewy looking complexion to this side of my skin, as opposed to this that still has the veins and I suppose that discoloration on this side. So, continuing on the other side, one pump of the foundation, the liquid, a pump of the liquid illuminizer. Now you notice that I haven't start, stopped just here, I have blended down my neck. Please do so, you might even find that you need to blend it right down your neck to get it to match the color on your decolletage, which is usually a lot darker than our neck and our face. Now, the reason that I say make sure that your foundation matches your decolletage, and I do this in all of my tutorials, is because this area is usually darker, and if you color match to your neck, you're going to look lighter in this area, which is aging, and it can make you look less healthy. It takes the glow away. So I promise you, if you color match your foundation to your decolletage, it's going to look healthier, and it's going to look more youthful. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to my eye makeup. So I'm pretty happy with the coverage of my foundation at the moment, but I'm gonna finish off my skin after I've done my eyes. Now the reason for that is because I'm going to use some darker colors and sometimes when you're using eyeshadow, which I'm sure you've experienced, you do get a little bit of fallout on the under eye area. Now, unless you've got some under eye shields that you can use or you're prepared to hold a tissue, it can get a little bit messy and I recommend doing your eye makeup 
first, then you can wipe away any mess, then you put your concealer on, and then you can finish off with your blushes and your bronzers last. Okay, so the tools that I'm going to use for my eye makeup all come from our full size, large white brush set. I know a lot of you have grabbed this brush set. It's great for travel because it's completely closed. What I love about it at home is that it acts as two cups. So you can put all your brushes or even your pencils, your lippies or something like that in this side. So I will be referring to whatever brushes that I use so that you can follow along. But look, there is no real rule. You use what you want, but I'll let you know by the number which brush that I have used. Okay, so to get started, I am going to start with my eyebrows. Now, the reason I like to start with my eyebrows is I feel that once you have this shape right, you will not overcompensate with your eye makeup. I find what a lot of women will do is they're trying to, I suppose, emphasize their eyes and make them a focal point, and they put a lot of eye makeup on trying to create that focus and making the eyes look really big and beautiful. But often what can happen is you end up with a whole load of makeup, your eyes looking actually smaller, when in actual fact what you were trying to do without even realizing was giving balance to the face. And you get that through correct shape brows. So if you spend the time in just getting the brow shape correct and as bold and as I suppose structured as it can be for your face, I promise you won't need to spend as much time on your eye makeup because everything will be nice and balanced. So let's get started with the eyebrows. First of all, I like to use the brush comb and that is number 13. I do this because I like to separate the brow hairs out and it makes the application of the brow dust that little bit more natural. And the color that I'm going to be using on myself is the Peggy. Okay, and that's a medium, like a taupe sort of a color, I suppose you would say. Um, and I'm going to be using the number 14 angle brush, okay? Um, and I'm going to be putting that on dry. Now you can actually put your brow dust on with a wet brush. It will mean that the brow dust goes on slightly darker and it will go on more bold, okay? So if you're really wanting that really structured look to your eyebrows, then just damp that your angle brush and it will do that, okay? Now, the rule with your brows, if you're wanting some guidance, um, apart from the fact you can grab samples, if you're wanting to know what shade to use, Usually if you've got lighter hair or gray hair or say a red hair, any sort of lighter hair color, you can usually go one shade darker than your hair. But when you've got dark hair, usually go one shade lighter, okay? Just so you're not looking like, you know, you've got black brows and it looking really intense. So there's just some little guidelines that you can go with. All right, so this is the color that I'm using, which is the Peggy, which is a taupe. It's probably our most popular color that suits most people. Um, and again, I'm just putting this on dry. It's water and sweat resistant, so you're not gonna lose an eyebrow, which is awesome. Okay, structuring your eyebrow, how do you do that? Now, there are different ways to do this, and if you're wanting to make your nose look bigger and smaller, there's all these little ways of doing that with the way you shape your eyebrows. But a very basic way for most people is this. If you're wanting to know where the start point is, you just grab your brush and you pop it at the side of your nose and do it straight up and then this is where your start should be. So we're gonna do a bit of paint by number here. Okay, so you could see mine was just, should have been a little bit further in, so I put a dot there. And then your arch, where does that sit? you look at the edge of your nose and it goes through your pupil and up. So grab your brush again and that's where your arch should be there. So again, mine could be a little bit higher. And the edge of your brow, where should that be? Grab a little bit more of your brow dust and again, using this part of your nose. So this part, you use the edge and then your arch and the edge of your brow, use the corner of your nose here. So it should sit flush with the edge of your eye, and that's the starting point. Now, what I wanna say is this. If you put your brow dust too far down, it's gonna drag your eye down. It's gonna give the illusion of droopy eyes. We don't want that. We want nice, open-looking almond eyes. So either pluck the hairs that are below that area or make sure you don't place your brow dust any lower than that. 
For women who are a little bit more of a mature age, don't put your arch up too high because it can be aging also. Unless you do have a really small eye area, uh, if you've got, I suppose when you look at yourself, there's only a tiny little bit of an eye area. If you don't have a balanced eye area, then you could create a slight increase in your arch to give the illusion that your eyes are a little bit bigger. But if you're more mature and you've got quite um, a lot of excess skin and you know maybe you've got a large, sort of more of a bulbous looking area up here, then I wouldn't increase your arch as it's going to increase the size of that. So just think if you've got a small eye area, yes, you can increase your arch, but if it's quite large or it's quite sort of bulbous, um, then you want to, if anything, maybe put your arch down a little bit lower. So now all we're going to do is do a paint by number and we're just going to keep dabbing the brow dust on in small amounts at a time, tapping off any excess and just sweeping it through the brow. So up to the arch and then down to the end. Okay, a final comb through to separate the brow dust make it look really nice and natural and voila it's given shape to my eye a little bit of definition and it's going to make it so much easier to have a balanced eye makeup look once I'm finished okay now I've had both of my eyebrows completed and I'm happy with the shape I'm just going to use the fan brush which is the number 11 just to sweep away any excess that it may have fallen down onto my under eye area and then I'm going to get started on my eyes. So for me, what I'm going to do is just place a tiny amount of concealer on my eyelid. Now the reason for that is I'm going to put on a couple of different eyeshadow colors. I want it to blend seamlessly and I want the eyeshadow to be a little bit more intense looking than if I was to not have anything on my eyelid. So if you're wanting your eyeshadow to really grab and look more intense, if you've got a tiny bit of concealer on underneath, not only will the concealer neutralize any of the veins, which the veins on the eye can distort the look of your eyeshadow. It's going to give a clear palette to work on, but it's also going to give a bit of stick. So that little bit of stick will allow the eyeshadow to, to blend to, I suppose, adhere to the skin a lot better. But there's a fine line. If you put too much concealer on, your eyeshadow will dissolve. So it's really a fine line of just getting it nice and even, a nice nude, but not too much. Okay, so you can see just that on its own has given a really nice even palette to look at. It's neutralized any of my veins and I'm literally putting on that much. So now that I've finished concealing the top of my eyes, I'm still not concealing underneath just yet because I am going to use a darker shade around my eyes, but sticking with the pretty with pink theme, I'm going to use our pink Pearl eyeshadow. So the Pink Pearl eyeshadow is quite, um, I suppose, a really earthy salmon colour. Um, and once you put it on, it's quite, uh, quite a pretty, pretty golden sort of salmon. It looks quite different on the skin than it does in the pot. Most minerals probably do. Now I'm going to use a flat brush out of the kit, and I'm going to use the number six. Okay, so it's a a flat but rounded top brush and I'm going to do a wash of color so a wash of color for me is just color all over the eyelid and I usually place the intensity of the eyeshadow right to the brow bone and then with a clean brush I blend it up into the brow area so this much on tap off any excess and let's go
Now what I really love about this pink pearl colour is it's a really easy shadow to use for most people. Um, it's quite a neutral colour, it doesn't uh, look so obvious if you're not great at blending, so it's a really nice colour as you can see just to use on its own. Um, but you can also obviously ramp it up by using some of the darker colours in the crease of your eye. Now with uh, that being in mind, I'm going to basically do what I call a self blending technique. So I've put the eyeshadow on, I haven't particularly blended it, but I have taken it up onto the brow bone. And now what I'm going to do is go straight to the darker color, and then that is going to be placed in my socket just here. I'm doing what's called a classic eye. So it is a little C just here. It's a really nice natural way of doing a smoky eye without doing a full dark eye, which I find most people can't pull off, especially if you've got close set eyes, if you've got smaller eyes, a full smoky eye, which is the dark color the whole way across the eyelid is quite uh, intense and it can make the eyes look smaller. So this technique is a really nice classic way of doing a smoky eye that suits, I think, most eyes. So. Grabbing the quartz, which is a really dark chocolate, and I'm going to now use the small dome brush, which is the number eight. Okay, the reason I'm using the smaller one as opposed to the larger one is that the smaller one is going to give me more intensity. It's going to keep the eyeshadow at its most bold. When you're using anything that's got a bristle that's quite long and not as dense, you're going to get more of, I suppose, um, less color, less intensity, and it's probably better for lighter colors, okay? So, using a tiny little bit of the quartz, and I mean a tiny bit, because you can always add more. It's very difficult to add less or blend away less. Um, but one of the tricks that I do recommend is keeping one of your brushes, like this one in particular, free of eyeshadow because this will become your corrector and I'll show you this in a minute. Okay, so quartz, we're just putting it into the corner of the eye, but for those of you that maybe have a droopy eye, what I want you to do is place the quartz right on, so in line with the edge of your eye, right on your brow bone, just there. No lower, no eyeshadow should sit lower than this area or it's going to create a droopy eye. As you can see, you just get the eyeshadow on and I want you to see how I'm doing this because often I find when people are doing their eyes, they look at the end result and they think, oh, mine's not looking that way. So they start again and they panic. So I want you to see that it does look quite ghastly as you're going along. Don't stress about that because you can always fix it at the end. Okay, so I'm just grabbing little bits at a time. And as I said, I'm concentrating on this top of the brow bone just here because this is going to create the illusion that my eye is up and more arm and, and not droopy and down. So now that I've got my little starting point, I'm now just going to blend into the socket. Spreading that eyeshadow that I'd loaded into this area and spreading it down. So it's effectively a little bit of a C. So down towards my iris. So I'm going like this and then down. Okay, so I've got my little starting point and I'm blending into the crease and down towards my pupil or my iris. Okay, so now I'm going to just blend this little bit up onto the brow bone a tiny bit because I want to create the illusion of bigger eyes. I haven't put any more on my brush noticed, I'm just blending that away. Okay, now, that's not perfectly blended just yet, but I'm gonna show you how to do that. So don't worry about it, we just wanna get it on, we wanna get the look right, and then we can blend in a moment. So I'm gonna continue on the other side. Again, placing that little bit right on the brow bone, but in line with the edge of my eye. I'm gonna load that up a little bit so that there's quite a bit of eyeshadow there that I can start blending with. So notice I'm pushing this into my skin. I'm not going back and forth like this. I just wanna get this bit on and blending it into the socket a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is blend it into the crease now that I've got the position right. Okay, 
and I'm going to blend it down into the iris or the pupil area. Okay, now with what's left on the brush now, I'm going to blend away this line a little bit, blending it up onto the brow bone, but still keeping this darkness to the outer third of the eye. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with these little bits that you can still see, but I'm gonna show you how we can get rid of those by just using your clean brush that you've got handy. Okay, so if you wanna look like you've done your makeup like a pro, just have a clean brush and I promise you, it'll always be your little lifesaver. So cream, uh, the clean brush that I'm using is number four and I'm just using it to tickle away the edge here. And look at that, instant blended eyes, all right? If you keep using the same brush, you're just gonna be pulling that dark color up and up and up and up and then end up looking like you've been in a fight, not looking glamorous and gorgeous. So, clean brush, blending away. Any of that excess, I'm just gonna clean up underneath there a little bit as well. Perfect, okay. Now the last color that I'm going to use is the Invincible. The reason I'm gonna use this one is it's a nice sort of natural, I wouldn't say silver, it's sort of like a natural white or a dark white, off-white colour. Um, I'm just going to use a tiny bit on the flat brush just to enhance the look of my brow bone because if you've got this area here just that little bit lighter, it's going to look more structured. It'll also open up the eye using a little bit of a lighter colour under here. So if you've got small eyes, then using a lighter colour will open those eye areas up. Again, if you've got a larger eye area, then just skip that bit. You don't need to do that because you're going to enhance it and make it look more bulbous. You don't want that. So just do the two eyeshadow colors and blend them away with the clean brush like I showed just then. All right, so now that we've done our eyeshadow, we're going to move on to eyeliner um, and then we're going to finish off the rest of the look. So the Pretty With Pink eyes are done and now I'm going to use eyeliner. I'm going to use our wind up black eyeliner okay because I just want something a little bit more intense with this particular look and a bit of a contrast um, with the pink colors that I'm going to use if you want something to be a bit more neutral then use the brown now with the eyeliner okay what you need to do is again not follow the eye down you want to just try and start that little bit above the lash line and what we're trying to do is again create the illusion that the eye is going up don't worry about doing a little wing at this point in time. Let's just focus on putting your eyeliner just above the lash line. So don't follow the lash line down. Okay, so you might feel like you've got a little bit of a gap, but that's okay. We can fill that in in a minute. We just want to get the starting point right. See, already this eye looks bigger because I've placed the eyeliner above my lash line. Now that I'm happy with the height, I'm going to just pop it to the edge a little bit and flick it out and up towards my eyebrow. I find closing my eye and just using the direction like this a really good tip. If you struggle with doing this and maybe your eyesight's not the best, you may want to grab our mag mirror which is in the tool section and then that's going to give you a much closer look on how to get this nice and straight. But the beauty with wearing eyeshadow and eyeliner together is it's not so obvious if you don't get the line straight. Now I'm gonna tickle up underneath the eyelashes, putting it on the inner rim because I want my eyelashes to look a bit thicker. So there's a little tip to thicker looking lashes. And using the corner of my eye as a guide, I'm just flicking out and up. So I'm almost going in my eye and flicking out and up. Okay, and it's just given me a little bit of a wing. Now I can extend that if I want to, but I don't want to, okay? I just want to keep this quite natural. Again, I'm going to place the eyeliner just above the eye up here. Okay, so there's a little bit of a gap under it, but that's okay. And notice I'm pulling my eyeliner in. I'm not going outwards, okay? I'm going in because that means that I will bring my eyeliner up and down as opposed to being encouraged to follow the eye. So don't do this. Do it this way.
Okay, so now I'm happy with the eyeliner. I'm gonna move on to curling my lashes with our curling uh, wand that is available in our tool section and then moving on to concealing, etc., on the face. All right, so curling the lashes. We have got our lash curler. Okay, so what you need to do when you grab a lash curler, and I do recommend these because it makes a massive difference to your eyelashes, the length and the thickness looking of them, is just grab as close to the base or the roots of the lashes as you can, gently clamp down, and you just then lift up. So you're almost pushing it into the socket of your eye, but just lift up, hold it there for a couple of seconds, and let go. And you can see my eyelashes have gone from nothing to standing up, okay? So it's just going to look a lot better once I've got mascara on, and it's gonna be easier to put the mascara on. Okay, now I'm gonna finish off the rest of my makeup before I finish off my eyes. Now, by that I mean, I do wanna put a little bit of eyeshadow under my eyes, but I need to conceal first. So I'm gonna conceal under my eyes now, and then I'm going to finish off with my blushes, my bronzer, then I will complete my eyes and my lips. So it's a little bit of a staged process, but I promise just breaking it down into this means that you're gonna get less mess and you're saving time because you're not having to start again. So concealing under the eyes, my preference is the peachy sleep concealer okay and it comes in the biodegradable wind up tube so there's quite a lot in there don't wind it up the whole way you don't want to wreck your product any wind up product is best just winding up a little bit okay just put your finger on there i think it's much better to do it that way as you can control the amount that you're using just place a little bit in the corner of the eye and down to probably midway corner and again, if you don't have dark circles, you might find that the foundation is enough. But for me, I have quite dark circles and I have to cover them. I like to put a little bit of the concealer just at the edge of my eye, but not getting it on the eye shadow. And then I'm gonna just blend that away. And then using both of my ring fingers, I'm now just gonna blend the concealer in. Perfect, bags be gone. So that's the Peachy Sleep Cream Concealer. Less is best when you're putting this on as you don't wanna accentuate any fine lines or any wrinkles. Okay, so moving on to the next product. Now I find that using a bronzer with a blush is always much more natural looking for the skin because it breaks the skin up into different looking elements, I suppose, different colors, which is naturally how the skin looks, rather than just the foundation looking one dimensional. So if you can introduce a bronzer and a blush, or at least a bronzer or a blush, rather than just wearing foundation on its own, your skin's going to look a lot more natural. So the bronzer that I'm using is the Winter. Now, you could use a slightly darker foundation if you'd prefer. Coco um, is quite popular as a contour product and a bronzer. It's quite a matte. It's therefore got the 20 plus sun protection. But I'm going to use the Winter Milan Bronzer, which is a matte finish as well. Now, I'm popping it around my hairline. I'm just putting it around my hairline here and then I'm just gonna put it a little bit underneath and along my jaw. So it's effectively a number three. That is going to decrease the size of your forehead because this area is going to look a little bit less big than it was before because dark colors make things look smaller. It is going to make underneath your cheekbones look smaller. Again, dark things make things look smaller. Now by making this look smaller, it's gonna make your cheekbones look bigger because they're all of a sudden lighter. Popping it along the jawline and down the neck even, if you're wanting to bring your neck into the same color as your decolletage, then you're going to just pop it down the neck and it also help hide maybe any excess skin that you don't want. About this much at a time, blend it on the lid before putting it onto the skin. And you can see this side of my face just looks that little bit healthier to this side.
Okay, so I'm really happy with that. Um, the bronzer has just broken everything up. It's given my cheekbones a little bit more height. It's made my forehead look a little bit smaller and it's given me a really nice structured jawline. And as I said before, if you're wanting to pop it down your neck, then do so as it will just give that little bit of lift and balance between the two colors and obviously bring everything together to look the same as your decolletage. Okay, so one of my other favorite things to do, and I always really like to have blush looking super, super, super natural. And the way you can do that is by using two blush colors. So rather than just picking a really bright color and just popping it on and looking like a clown, what you wanna do is put a neutral color underneath first or a really natural sort of, I suppose, sandy or a, or a nice brown or something that's really natural on the cheeks first as a blush then you can put your popping color of blush on after that so i'm going to use my favorite which is the madame moiselle which is the cream blush now it does come in the new biodegradable wind up packaging which is amazing okay so all you need to do is just pop a little bit on this part of your hand, rub it together and put it on and you're done. So I'm gonna pop that on now. I'll just show you how much I'm using. About this much I've pulled out. Just popping it on here. And this is a really good way of putting cream blush on. Starting on the edge of your eyebrow, halfway through your nose is a good starting point. Any lower, and it will drag your face down, which as an older person or a more mature skin or someone with a skinnier face, you don't want to be looking drawn. You want the face to be looking nice and even. So just popping it on here and blending it in a circular fashion to the hairline. So the Mademoiselle is a beautiful pink in its own right. It's a really soft baby pink. The theme is pretty with pink. So we've got the pink pearl, we've got the mademoiselle, which is obviously that baby pink. That just looks beautiful. You could stop there, put your lipstick on, finish off your eyes and you're done. But just by putting on another pop of color, it just ramps and vamps up, I suppose, this look a little bit more. So I'm now using the summer, which is a really nice pink blush. It looks bright, but it's not once it goes on. Again, tiny amount our products are really versatile highly pigmented so you don't need a lot okay so i'm just dotting it onto the top of my cheekbone and blending it into so i'm going from cheek to cheek blending it onto but not covering completely but blending it onto the cream blush now if i was to use this color just by itself it would probably be too intense. So this is how you can introduce pops of color without it being too much. Now, a little tip, if you put too much blush on or you put it too low and you're just like, wow, that's too much. If you just grab your Kabuki brush, which always has a little bit of foundation left on it, sweep under and up. Okay, and it's going to just basically eliminate or calm that down a little bit so it's not so intense it's also going to help correct any mistakes that you've made there so we've concealed we put our bronzer on our blush on and the bronzer has also contoured the skin what i'm now going to do is finish off my eye makeup so I have curled my lashes as we watched before and now what I'm going to do is pop on the lash primer and I'm going to use the black waterproof mascara, okay? Um, you can use any mascara that you want but I just prefer to use the lash primer first because it just gives a little bit of extra length and thickness to the eyes. Okay, so finishing off the mascara, I like to then just get another little extra dip and using the, what's on the tip there, I just point the wand at my eyes and I just focus on tickling these outer lashes rather than loading them up to try and get length. I just ticker, tickle the outer lashes and you can see that's instantly given me an extra looking wing to the eye and it's also lengthened the lashes there. 
perfect. Now, you can put mascara on the bottom lashes if you'd like to, that's completely fine. If you're someone who finds that mascara smudges, then you probably do need to use the waterproof mascara just to help prevent that. Um, or if you do feel that your eyes run, then just put an eyeshadow underneath. It's going to give definition, it's going to give the look of more lashes, but without the risk of it smudging as much as a mascara would. So I'm gonna do that for you. I'm gonna use the angle brush again. I'm using the quartz eyeshadow, which is the same as what I used in my sockets. A little tiny bit and the longest tip of the angle brush first, I'm just placing it on the outer third of my eye. Again, this is going to give height to my eye. It's going to give the look of more lashes and it's less likely to smudge than a mascara. So it's a nice subtle height. You can see this eye looks a lot bigger than this eye. Again, a small amount, no further in than your iris. That's the most flattering. If you've got larger eyes and you wanna try and minimize the appearance of that, then you might wanna bring this shadow two thirds, so across to this part of your iris. And then again, if you're wanting to make it look more intense, you might wanna run it the whole way along your eye. But never halves, never stop halves. It's always one third, two thirds, or the whole way. Okay, another little tip before I finish off with your eyes, if you find that um, your eyeliner doesn't stay put, um, maybe you've got skin that sits on top of your eyelid, then of course it's probably not going to stay on as well, then you might just find that using eyeshadow on its own is better. Or if you just use an angle brush with a similar colour eyeshadow over the top and just press it over the top, it'll seal your eyeliner down and that's what most makeup artists or professionals will do to make their eyeliner last the day. Okay, now that I'm all done, I'm now gonna reveal our new bright pink color in Persistence. That's the name of the new color. It's a really bright pink. It stays on for quite a long time. So I'm gonna pop that on and I'll be back in a second to reveal how it looks. I always love a good reveal. I could have shown you how I put it on, but I just wanted to reveal the end result. This color is so beautiful. It's a really vibrant pink. Uh, as I said, it's one of our new released lipsticks. Maybe by the time you see this, it won't be so newly released, but it is just such a beautiful color. So the look has been pretty with pink. We've used pink eyeshadow, pink cheeks, pink lips. All of the products are multi-purpose. You can use them wherever you would like. And as I said before, this is our new lipstick and I can't wait for you to get hold of one of these as well.